Characterized as a person who's easy to work with, he listens, he really hears both sides, and he's a pleasant person to have at the office. <laughs> if you've ever worked in an office, it's not a pleasant place to be. You don't find pleasant people in the office, and they're definitely not the president. We've talked a lot about fossil fuel divestment in the context of divestment from Israeli apartheid. We all know what he did there or what he didn't do, which is divest, right? Shame. <laughs> We don't need to talk about that over and over again. I just want to say one thing. It was 49 degrees Celsius in New Delhi yesterday. Right? Climate change is no longer coming. Climate change is here. We think we're having a heat wave now. 200 people have died in the last week alone in just New Delhi, the city that I'm from. Right? And we had a chance. We had a chance to divest from that violence in 2016. And President Gertner said, no. We had a chance to divest from Israeli apartheid in 2006. We had a chance to do it whenever. Why is a university invested in weapons companies? Because President Gertler said so. That's his legacy. But it's not just investments that drive one man. In 2019, were any of you here in 2019? <laughs> well, then you might remember this more than me, because I wasn't. But. There was a string of student suicides at this university in 2019. Three students, one building, Bahen. If any of you have been in engineering or math or computer science, you know that the way this university, the way this university is run, the, the way our academics go, it is one of the most stressful programs in the country, if not the continent. It is one of the most competitive, and it, one of the most expensive, and one of the most expensive cities in the world. People were talking about this in 2018 when the first suicide happened. They said that we need to reevaluate our academic policy, but goddammit, before that, we need to put up some simple temporary barriers. So this is getting bad. So even said this to President Gertler and he didn't respond. In the same way that he refuses to say Palestine today in a letter, he refused to say the word suicide. The first death happened. The second death happened. They were all incidences. Right? This is not, it's a heavy matter because I'm not here to say that like it is, no fuck it, it is his fault. It is the fault of this administration for not listening to the students when they said that this is an epidemic, right? And then finally when the third incident happened, they put up some temporary barriers. After a sit-in in Simcoe Hall. That's what it took for temporary barriers. And then you know what they did next? They made a task force, a committee. Our current provost, at that time, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, Trevor Young, was on that task force. It took them two years to say that health and wellness needs shorter wait times. It took them two years to say that. Health and wellness is not a shorter wait times. I've tried. It takes me three hours to get there. They made an app. Oh my god. Prudent financial investment. That's all this university really is. It's prudent financial investment. It's the largest landlord in Toronto. As a, as a scholar of cities, President Gertler knows how landlords work. It is a private equity. Today's conversation honored Brian and Joanna Lawson. Brian Lawson is VP at Brookfield Management, one of the 44 external investment management firms that we bank our money with. We gave him a degree for that. We started banking with him when Brian Lawson was on the governing council. So suddenly this man's on the governing council and now we are giving him our money. That seems to me to be some sort of Allegations, they will sue me for defamation. They love suing us. So that's President Griffith's legacy. But that's not just, that's not it. There's also more. Were any of you here a year, two years ago, and you'd remember a professor, an absolute scumbag, still a professor at this university by the name of Robert Rice? 
Robert Rice is a professor at the University of Scar um, in Scarborough, a tenured professor. Thank you. And a tenured professor who had multiple allegations of racist conduct, of sexual harassment against his grad students. And, yeah, shame. Fuck yeah. Robert Rice. Yeah. But fuck President Gertler, too, because he knew about it. There were students here every single day saying, we need this man removed. Tenure or no, if tenure exists to protect predators, then tenure should not exist. That's it. And it fell on deaf ears again. President Gertner never responded. We had a very brave student who was part of the campaign, so I take it. She took a banner up there on her con on their convocation and had U of T protects rapists. It was true then, it's still true today. Robert Rice is still a professor at this university. So when we talk about this kind, affectionate man, this easy to approach, this easy to work with man, President Merrick Gertler, that's not his legacy. This is his legacy. Not listening to students, the community, when they're telling him what the right thing to do is, because what he's balancing two sides, he's balancing his checkbooks is what he's balancing. Shame. But that doesn't need to be true, Merrick. You have a chance right now. I wouldn't call it the right thing. It is the only thing someone can do now. Disclose, divest, cut ties with these genocidal institutions in the country known as Israel. Do it now. Do it now because that might actually be something you want on your Wikipedia page. Not what I just told you. Your Wikipedia page right now, I promise you, Medic, it's not what it's gonna look like the second you step down because God damn it, I will edit it myself. But, yeah, Merit, it's up to you. What do you want the first line of your legacy to be? Do you want it to be that finally, when the number got high enough, you finally saw the light and you divested this massive institution? Is that what you want it to be? Because you are giving you that chance. You can finally say, listen to student voices. You love saying that. You can finally do it for once, goddamn. But he's not going to do it. He's a... Unless we make him do it. Right? We've been here 50 days. Because I know we're not going to stop, right? Camp or no camp, we're not going to stop. We're not going to rest. This goes divest. We will not stop. We will not rest. This goes divest. We will not stop. We will not rest. One other thing about his legacy, which is common to every university in this country for 10 years, is that tuition has gone up. Gentrification never started, never really stopped. This urban professor who's a scholar of cities could not tell what gentrification is, or he was a willing profiteer of it. Whatever it is, he is part of a series of institutional actors who have made this country unlivable, unaffordable. He's not just a university president for people who don't, who aren't on our side, for people there, for everyone here who isn't on site. Think about why you're paying six dollars for Tim Hortons in the morning. You think this university doesn't have a role to play in that? It does. It is, it is a university bringing in international students in the thousands to pay sixty thousand dollars a year in tuition when education should be free. So yeah, that's it. That, that is President Gertler's legacy to me. And President Gertler has an opportunity now to fix that. Is he going to take it? I don't know. Maybe if he wants his grass back, yeah. maybe he takes it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck your grass. Yesterday in court, Judge Conan said this, I understand that any social progress that has been, has been because of some form of protest. It has been because of a group of troublemakers that disrupted the existing order. That is the only way there has been social advancement. As an alumni of this 
Northwestern University, I attended U of T because I believe in higher education and learning. It is appalling to me that this institution, an institution that is meant to prepare students for the future, is investing in the weapons and bombs being used to martyr children. Shame! This university is supposed to prepare us for the future, but at the same time is destroying the hopes and dreams and lives of an entire generation. Shame! Today is the 258th day of Israel's genocidal siege on Gaza and day 50 of the University of Toronto encampment. Over the past eight months, we have borne witness to the death of over 40,000 Palestinians with so many more missing under the rubble and over 80,000 injured, and those are just conservative numbers. These children, these children are not just numbers, and this is not a loss of life, but a loss of humanity and a loss of innocence. How can we walk upon this earth when we can't protect the weakest of humanity? And despite on Sunday announcing a tactical pause to allow aid trucks to enter Rafah, Israel continues to murder Palestinians waiting for aid, continues to target civilian tents in Gaza's humanitarian zone. This is a genocide in which the University of Toronto invests in profits. Shame! Children six years old and younger are killed without mercy. They cannot find anyone to help them, and they hide under cars for fear of the actions of a criminal entity supported by this university. Shame! Palestinians are constantly reminded that there is no safe place for them. We launched our encampment to show the university that the students cannot be silenced. We simply cannot stay silent as the world keeps counting the dead, the wounded, and the starved, as well as the endless number of war crimes being committed by the Israeli government. This is why our campaign did not begin in October. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni have been demanding that U of T divest from the Israeli war machine since the early 2000s. As of late, the students have been protesting every which way possible since October, and to no avail yet. While we have been met with incredible support from the Greater Toronto and University community, we've been met with outright hostility from President Gertler and his administration. Instead of committing to divestment, U of T is actively seeking this court order to give themselves moral cover for calling the Toronto Police to use its violence and brutality on their own students, faculty, and staff, and alumni. For police! Just this week, we presented U of T with a reasonable and streamlined settlement offer so that both parties could avoid going through with this injunction. The offer was for, one, the university to just wholesale divest from all armament companies full stop, and two, for the university to disclose annually how much money it invests with each of its 44 external investment managers. Not only did the university refuse this offer, they told us that any offer they'd agree to would require us not to fight this injunction so that the administration could still obtain an order restricting protest on campus. So needless to say, we are all still here their afternoon. We are all still here because the university prefers to keep investing in the genocide of the Palestinian people, as well as all other genocides taking place in Congo, in Sudan, in Kashmir for that matter. Shame! We're still here because the university has more interest in ending this protest and addressing its complicity. We're still here simply because the University of Toronto does not care about its community, it does not care about its students. The University of Toronto especially does not care about its Palestinian students. If it did, it would stop in West investing in weapons and bombs and the destruction of Palestine. This court order calls in the police for these Palestinian students simply protesting the use of their tuition dollars. Tuition dollars that fund the Israeli war machine that is actively annihilating many of their own family members. The University of Toronto also does not care about its Jewish students. And let me repeat, the university would rather call the Toronto P Police Service on its own students than divest. And if it did care about its Jewish students, it would not weaponize anti-Semitism in court and sit idly by while Jewish students at this encampment have been harassed and targeted simply for saying genocide is wrong and defending their Palestinian peers. The University of Toronto does not care about academic freedom either. If it did, it would not help pay for the bombs that have been used to destroy all 12 universities in Gaza. Shame! Simply put, the University of Toronto does not care. But we, the troublemakers, do.
We, we will defend Palestine and we will defend our right to protest for what is right always. Thank you so much. We targeted one of our organizers this morning and took away her bag and her banner as she was entering her convocation. Shame! It is our right to protest. This is U of T. U of T does not allow students the right to protest. U of T does not stand for freedom of speech. But we still managed to get her a banner and she beautifully protested on stage. There is nothing, there is nothing U of T can do to stop us. The more they come at us and fail to do the right thing, the larger and stronger our campaign against this university gets. Our legal team laid absolute waste to the racist arguments and tactics at the injunction hearing these last two days. They laid baseless arguments and tried to frame us as violent and hateful people. They had no evidence and most of their arguments were based on second-hand and sometimes even third-hand information. This institution has been and remains complicit in the Israeli war machine. Do they expect us to be silent and accept this? And get this. We know that U of T is going to disclose, divest, and cut ties. It's no longer a question of if, it's just a matter of when. Will it be now, when they still have a chance to make a meaningful difference in the lives of Palestinian people? Or will they, or will they do with Palestine, just like they did with South African apartheid, and be the absolute last to disclose, divest, and cut ties? giving them the chance to do the right thing. And instead of agreeing to divest from all weapons manufacturing companies, they are suing their students and trying to get TPS to read a peaceful protest. Shame! Protest that is fighting for basic human rights. Shame! Shame! We hope that UFT chooses to be on the right side of history this time. We're doing you a favor. Organizers with Occupy UFT and a member of the People's Circle for Palestine. Today marks the 258th day of the ongoing genocide in Gaza. Shame. Shame! Despite this, the Western states, including the settler colonial state of so called Canada, have maintained their complicity in this genocide. Shame! Our institutions have stood alongside Israel and its murdering of over 50,000 children and thousands of women, elders, and men. Shame! <laughs> this includes this very institution that we're currently at. The University of Toronto in the past eight months has given precedent to profit making and its colonial roots over morality and a genuine attempt at turning away from its colonial past. However, the students at this institution have taken the moral responsibility of standing up for a just cause. And instead of at least lending themselves to the demands put forth by these students, the university has proceeded with an injunction against this encampment. Shame! Shame! During the hearing that took place over the last two days, the university was more concerned about not being able to have breakfast on front campus than the actual lives of over 40,000 human beings. Shame! We have been here for 51 days already, and we will pursue the struggle until the university either fulfills its moral obligation to disclose and divest, or continues to unveil its true colors as it has in the past eight months. The University of Toronto has seen death, destruction, and the pain of people of Gaza, and they still remain silent. There aren't any more words that can convince such corrupt systems to change, and so I will not waste my en any more of my energy doing so. As a Palestinian, I have never thought I would see this many people fighting for my cause. So I'd like to end this by thank you, thanking you all from the bottom of my heart. And finally, no convocation until liberation!
he's been organizing for over a decade, starting in the student movement, and he's now an organizer with BYM. Please welcome us, son. For the past 50 days, we're being, we're seeing the students, faculty, alumni, community, all standing together against genocide, all standing for what's right. And that's what we need to continue doing. When we, so, when we say we won't stop, we won't rest, we actually mean it. We're not going to stop, we're not going to rest until Palestine is free. And I'm just going to, as, as, as uh, my comrade just said, I'm Ghassan with the PYM. I'm just going to talk about a quick few points that were talk, like, discussed briefly. Like my comrade Avi talked, like he talked about Merrick's legacy and about how the university is not listening to our demands. And this is not in isolation of the outside community, outside of the university. We've seen the same thing with other institutions. We've, see, we've seen the same thing with, with, the gov with the Canadian government, with institutions all around the world, like with, with weapon companies, with transportation companies like Maersk, who are directly involved in the, in, the, in the genocide that's happening. All of these companies, all of these institution, institutions, all of these governments will eventually listen to us because we're going to keep the fight going. And again, the student movement is not isolated. The student movement is at the heart of the Palestinian struggle. A lot of Palestinian leaders and the revolutionaries started off as student organizers. And this is mainly because of the culture, because of the insistence of Palestinians to keep the fight going generation after generation until total liberation. And the only way we can win this movement, we can liberate Palestine, and we will, is that if we ensure a just world for, for all, for Turtle, from Turtle Island to Haiti, to, to Cuba, to Congo, Sudan, to Palestine, if we're all united on all fronts, we always talk about unity, but it's not an easy thing to achieve. It requires us to make sacrifices, it requires us to understand each other, to protect each other, because we keep us safe. It's not the, it's not the university, it's not TPS, it's not anyone. We keep us safe. Unity, we're organizers and leaders, keep growing up and keep the fight going. And this is the definition of popular credo. It's up to us to create that community. From that community comes, come the leaders that are going to guide us towards the liberation, towards freedom for all of us. And this unity will also bring the masses. Because without the masses, without the numbers, it's difficult to win. So that's, that, that we have an obligation, we have a duty, all of us here, everyone who, who's been coming for the past eight, nine months, to keep going, to keep... To keep to keep talking about Palestine, to keep talking about other struggles, because again, the masses and unity is what's going to keep us go going. It's going to what, this is what's going to make us win. And with the masses, we can put more pressure on these institutions to divest and to stop arming Israel, to stop funding genocide. By the university, and again, the university and TPS are both complicit in, gen in the genocide happening to our people back home. And again, they choose to try and suppress our voices instead of focusing on ending genocide, instead of focusing on standing up for what's right. There are over 40,000 children people killed. There are over 15,000 children killed. There are over 80,000 injured. injured. Are more than 1.7 million refugees. And this university wants to keep talking about, about the injunction, about this incoming gun. But they have seen for the past 50 days, they have seen for the past 8 months, they have seen for the past 76 years that Palestinians are not going to stop until Palestine is free. Young and done, that's at 2 p.m.